What's up, y'all? It is your girl. Ooh, my shirt's twisted. What's up, y'all? It is your girl, Sarah from Sarah Styles here in today's episode of What Sold Wednesday. I am going live, so feel free to ask questions and join in on the commentary as well. Let me know how your week was and any questions that arise. In today's video, I am going to cover the economic updates from the past two economic updates from the past two weeks and how they impact reseller our reselling business. I'm going to share my top categories and top brands with you from the past two weeks as well. And then I'm going to get into some eBay strategies, things that I've been trying, and I'm going to show you exactly how I look at my eBay store to figure out if these strategies that I am trying are actually working or not, and how I'm going to decide what to continue with and what to change. And then at the very end of the video, I will get into all of the items that sold on Poshmark and eBay. So thank you so much for joining, making sure, there we go. What's up, Jacob? What is up, Margaret? No, not Margaret. Margaret was last time. What's up, Wendy? Sorry, guys. I'm starting to learn names um, for people that are joining. Everyone's, you have different names on different platforms, um, but it says reseller Wendy. So I should have known that. Margaret was my, um, I had her on last week. So speaking of, I do uh, every Monday, I have a reseller accountability call. Reseller Wendy was on this past Monday. She is joining, she works at the post office. So we had lots of really good information about the post office, lots of stuff going on now and tips and tricks for her. The reselling accountability is open to anybody who would like to join every single Monday, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard. You can join in the video chat if you would like to send me a DM if you want to join that, or you're welcome to join in the comments as well. So let's get right into it. This content, this video is always really content heavy, lots of information to share with you guys. So I am going to jump right into it. Feel free to ask questions along the way if you have them or if there are specific things that you guys want me to look at. So I'm going to start really quickly with an economic update. I, I do this once a week. However, last week was my monthly call with Chris from a daily refinement. We are kind of doing a little mentorship. He's mentoring me. We're doing a little mentorship. So that was last Wednesday. So we're catching up uh, two weeks. So this video is going to be for the past two weeks. We are August 12th right now. Um, mid pandemic life is crazy. How is this impacting our reseller business? A couple things that I want to clue you in on. Uh, so I did a survey on my Instagram and I was, so it's going to be a small sample size, but just to kind of get an idea of what people's spending habits are right now, 84% of the people that answered the survey are not doing back to school shopping for their children. If you don't have kids, um, you may not be following this, but a lot of the schools are doing a remote start for the beginning of the year and or through the entire entirety of the year. So the kids aren't actually going back to school and they're not doing shopping, which can impact our sales. You tend to get a big kick up in August. If you sell, I sell mo mainly clothing, purses, and shoes, and you'll get an uptick back to school shopping in August and September. Uh, we'll get into my numbers in a minute, but it, I'm gonna tell you it hasn't been stellar. And I think part of that is, is you're not getting that back to school shopping for the type of inventory that I am selling. Uh, let me know what you guys are noticing as well too, for sure. The other thing, there's a couple other things. I don't want this to be political, but this does impact our reselling business. And it's something that we need to be mindful of there at the end of July. So at the beginning of the pandemic, they passed, they being Congress passed a uh, stimul stimulus. And this was an extra $600 to people who were on unemployment. The last time I checked the unemployment number, it was almost 40 million people. And they were getting an extra $600 that ended at the end of July. So now those people, you, you know, have less money. That's $600 less that they have. The other thing that ended with that stimulus, the stimulus ended at the end of July is there was protection for rent protection and mortgage protection. If you weren't able to pay your rent or pay your mortgage, you were not going to be foreclosed or you were not going to be evicted. That ended at the end of July. And Congress has been in talks. They've been in talks for quite a while, but they're going back and forth and they have yet to find a decision to release a new stimulus. So that's kind of been up in the air. That turmoil can cause people, even if they do have money, it can cause people to kind of hoard their money and be a little bit more cautious with their money because they're uncertain of what's going to happen in the future. And then those people that were on unemployment now do not have that money on unemployment or 
hey, they really do have to pay their rent now if they have the money, they're putting it towards their rent so that they're not getting evicted. Trump did come out this weekend, President Trump did come out this weekend with a executive order um, to try and help speed this along. However, again, not going to get political, but however, a lot of what he put in the executive order, he doesn't have the capabilities to do. He doesn't have the power to do. So a lot of that stuff like unemployment is not actually going to be able to happen. A lot of the stuff that was in that executive order is not actually going to help some of that. So hopefully Congress gets it together and comes out with something fairly soon. There's also a lot of uncertainty. I know myself as a mom of children, there's a lot of uncertainty about the schools and what's going to happen and how I'm going to work and have the kids at home. And my mind is on other places besides schooling. So that's what that is. I'm not seeing an update on comments. Let me check my YouTube really quick. Sometimes there's a delay or maybe you guys are just really quiet today. Uh, let me check my YouTube really quick and see if. Sorry, guys, I'm pulling up my YouTube. There's a delay in comments, I think. So I want to be able to make sure to check in with everybody. Hold on, let me pull it up here. All right for the delay, guys. How has your guys' week been? I am going to get into my sales in just a minute. Updates for me. We'll look at my strategies as well. And I'm going to show you on eBay how I look at these strategies and decide whether they're working for me or not. So let me pull up my We'll look at my oh. strategy. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there was a little bit of a delay, not huge. You guys are just being quiet. Apparently I have lots to say. So let me check in. Sorry for the delay. Okay, yeah, we're good. Just being quiet. All right, so let's get into it. I'll keep talking then. I just wanna make sure that I don't, sometimes there's a delay and I wanna make sure that I don't um, ignore you guys that are watching. So that is what's happening with economics, something that we have to be mindful for. I think that you need to watch what's going on in the world to be able to pivot your business as needed. I have um, put in some lower average sale price items because that is what people are spending. They have less money, but they were still spending. So I'm trying to kind of diversify the level of items that I have in my business. Things that have changed for me in the past two weeks, I have been, con I have considered purchasing a pallet. So, well, take a step back. Back to the kids in school thing. I have three children. If you are new to my channel, I have three children. If you're new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe and notifications if you like content like this and you guys smash that like button as you watch this. But if you're new to my channel, I have three kids. I work from home ages three, five, and 14. So they were all going to be in school this year. And now it's going to be a remote start. At least for the first two weeks, it is a remote start. And then my 14 year old is, is starting his first year of high school and he is going to be going hybrid. So that's three days a week that he is home. He has special needs. So he needs a lot of support. So my hours are going from Roughly, I mean, I they managed to let me get in roughly 35 to 40 hours a week, mainly kids with kids. So that's about 35 hours I'm working with them playing in the background or during nap time. Well, they don't nap, but during the afternoon, they usually watch a show, stuff like that. So as remote learning comes up, that's all going away. I'm trying to ramp up and be able to figure out how to still make this work. One of those ways is looking at buying a pallet. So I'm not having to purchase, having to spend my time that I do have outsourcing. I did bid on one pallet this week at the beginning of the week and I lost, but it gave me an idea of how it works and realistically what it means to purchase a pallet and it and to look at the finances a little bit better. It, I lost because it went above what I was thinking I would spend on it. And so now I'm doing a little bit more research and really getting it into the nitty gritty of it to figure out if that's something that I want to do. So that's something that's on the back burner. Well, that's I'm actively looking at to see if I'm going to purchase a pallet liquidation palette. I have worked with a friend of mine has a eighth grader who is looking for like a part time job. And so I have had her come over. Um, and it's someone that I know I was cautious in bringing people into my house, but it's someone that I know our kids in, are in school together. So there are or will be in school together. So they're already kind of in the same 
um, pod. We're hanging out with the same types of people. I know that they're taking the precautions that need to be made. She is wearing a mask when she comes into my house, but I have purchased, I have uh, been training her on how to take pictures in hopes that I can continue to list as I am now becoming a homeschooling mom. So that's something that has changed. The other thing that has changed in my business as well, in July, I was listing 10 items a day on eBay and I have moved to only listing seven items a day so that this allows me to get, so this allows me to get ahead. So I went from, um, Sorry, I was reading, Duncan says something about a palette. Let's check in with that really quick. Be careful with palettes. Make sure you can see every item on the palette. You can get burned with one bad unsellable stock. Valid point. The palettes that I've been looking at are manifested. So this is palette lingo I'm learning as I go. Manifested means that it comes with everything that's in the palette. Typically, you're going to be spending a bit more money on this because you know what you're getting in the palette. Unmanifested is kind of like a mystery box that Duncan is speaking to. Um, so while we're on the palette, I'm gonna ask you guys, I'm kind of contemplating between two palettes I'm looking at. One is more like trendy, free people um, type of inventory, and then one is more active wear, Nike, Adidas, ideology, stuff like that. I have purchased parts of a palette like that in the past, the active wear. So I kind of feel comfortable with what it's going to do. The free people, I like the idea of, however, I don't use stock photos. And I'm looking the more that I'm researching free people everywhere you look, it's stock photos. And so I don't think my photos can compare to the stock photos. So I'm kind of I don't know that I'm going to do the pre free people, but I would love to know your guys' thoughts and perspectives on it as well. The other thing with the free people, it's like trendier stuff, but it's a large portion of free people. The other thing that I'm cautious with with the free people is with everything that's happening, if we get shut down again or kids are remote learning, people aren't really out in the world. So they're likely going to be wearing more active wear than they're going to be wearing, you know, trendy, cute, hipstery type stuff. So let me know your guys' thoughts on that. Um, and what you think between those two palettes is kind of the ones that I'm looking at right now. So what was I saying? Oh, I, so I went from listing seven items a day to 10 items a day in hopes that I can get ahead and not have to maintain as high a volume in my store to list. So on that note, let's see what my two weeks were like. So we're talking the past two weeks. I, I think, oh, so this is Margaret. I choose the free people, but I think athletic would do better for you. Good point on athletic active wear. Bring need more. Yeah. So it's kind of where I'm going back and forth. Uh, the free people, the lot that I'm looking at is smaller. So it's less of a risk. Um, it's like a fourth of the size of the active wear one less that I have to process to kind of get an idea, but I'm trying to figure out uh, what to do because I don't use stock photos and I don't I don't know that I'll be able to sell it. Uh, so that's where I'm at. Let's get into it. What Everything that I'm sharing with you guys is for the past two weeks. Like I said, I had that call with Chris last week. So this is my what sold for two weeks. In the past two weeks, I sold $2,297 on Poshmark and eBay and one Instagram sale. I post new listings on there and hauls every once in a while and stuff. And someone asked if they could purchase it. And I said, sure, I don't actively do that because it's like an added work to do an invoice and get their email. It's just added work um, and bookkeeping and stuff. But someone asked me and so I did sell one Instagram sale. That is split over 36 sales on eBay and 25 sales on Poshmark for a total of 62 sales. Let's jump right in to my data. So on my channel, um, I have a degree in mathematics, if you're new, and I look at the numbers to help drive my business. My channel is to help you also do the same for you. My numbers, my sourcing, my knowledge is going to be different than yours. And I think it's very helpful and imperative for you guys to be able to make these choices for your business as well. And I want to be able to teach you how to do it. What we are looking at is the sales and trends dashboard. I have three different dashboards for sale www.sarahstylesllc.com or on Etsy. The one that we're looking at right now is the sales and trends dashboard. I'm only going to be looking at this one for the sake of this video. Uh, 
I have other videos that go into other ones and sometimes I'll look at the other dashboards as well. But this has every single platform that I sell on. This is all of my data. You do have to, so this is all of my data. I do maintain my own data and update this as I list and as I am selling things. Uh, let me move this around just so I can see what you guys are saying. Sorry, okay, so we are looking here. This is rolling 28 day comparison. So this 28 days proof, compared to the previous 28 days. Gross revenue is down $700. Items sold is definitely down 46 items. I'm selling 46 items less this period compared to the previous period. My average sale price is up $5. So that is helping me in my gross revenue um, because I'm selling almost 50 items less, but I'm selling higher price items. It's allowing this gross revenue to not be quite as bad. My items listed, I am up on my listing. This kind of wavers, hold on. This kind of wavers a little bit because, hold on just a second. There's a kid at my door. Just text my husband to come get them. <laughs> Mom life. Okay, so this, the items listed kind of wavers because I do pay someone to list for me because I don't have time to do it with the children at home. And so she puts the item in here as she lists. And sometimes she does all of them for the week. Sometimes she does, you know, 10 a day or whatever it is. So this just kind of wavers depending on when she has done them recently, but my sell through rate is down as well. Sales are down for me. Absolutely no lie about that. So like I said, a couple of reasons that I think this is back to school shopping, I think is less, I think because of the economy, because the unemployment is, you know, unemployment went away, all the things that I mentioned before, but then also, Sorry, but then also with me listing less items, I'm also been less active because I've been trying to get ahead. Poshmark, you definitely have to be active to be getting those sales. I've been less active on Poshmark because I'm really trying to crank, ahead, crank out photos and get ahead on those. I've been researching the palette. Um, I've been doing, I, I've been trying to get my kids registered for school and figure out what that's going to look like and make sure that we're prepared for there. So that's kind of where we're at with that. August, I have sold 46 items so far in August. I'm at 1,607. $1,671, average sale price of $36. So I am happy that my average sale price has come back up. I do prefer to sell less items at a higher price for sure. So what is driving these sales? Let's take a look at my top categories and my top brands. We're now looking at the current 28 days. So from August 12th to 28 days prior. So you're looking at about half of August and half of July. If you have a dashboard, you can go in and look at, you know, whatever months or the whole year as you want to. For the sake of the video, I want to look at the past 28 days. What is driving this? We are looking at categories now. Um, over here on the left is your sell through rate. And then on the bottom, you're looking at your average sale price. My Bolo categories and brands down below are going to be up here. It means that they are selling at a high average sale price and they're selling at a high they're selling at a high sell through rate and at a high average sale price. So these would be like my bolos, but anything up in this direction is better. So categories, what is driving that? Electronics is one of the bolos. Um, high average sell price, $67, a sell through rate of 69%. That's pretty legit. The reason electronics is killing it for me is because my brother-in-law sources my electronics. I know absolutely nothing about electronics. However, he's been reselling for about 12 years and kind of just got burnt out of the listing process. And so he's like, I still like shopping. Can you just list and sell for me and we'll do a consignment split. So I think electronics probably are doing pretty well right now anyway, but he knows what he's purchasing. I have no, I know nothing about electronics. So this is absolutely him. Something that is also selling at a high average sale price. Again, this is my brother-in-law thankful for his business right now. He is definitely helping me get those numbers up, uh, average sale price of $128. I will take that. And I will get into, for, uh, th so this is a full month, 28 days worth, but for the past two weeks, I will show you everything that is contributing to that, the actual items that sold. 
these are things that I have contributed to my business. Um, but this is something that I think is important and that the pandemic has pushed me outside of my comfort zone in looking at different ways to keep my business afloat. And I had never considered consignment in the past. And now I'm kind of messing around with the idea with him. And granted, I don't love once I get paid, giving him a percentage of it, but it has been so nice to just have inventory that I know is going to sell that does well come to my house. So it is something that I'm considering venturing out into other consignment, maybe doing other purses higher. I think for me, doing consignment would have to be a higher average sale price item. I don't think it would be worth it to, you know, make three dollars on at the end of the day but if i can get someone who loves bags and they want to do some consignment um that's something that i would consider so bags are up there 18 percent sell through rate average sale price of 61 dollars accessories i'm not sure what this is actually so i don't know 50 percent sell through uh we'll see what contributed to that shorts 50% sell through average sell price of $22. So the average sell price is a little bit lower. Let me show you that. I didn't show you guys that on here. There's a simulator in this as well. My goal is 8,000 gross revenue for the month. So I come over here and kind of have an idea when I'm sourcing of what I want, what I'm aiming for. And so I'm aiming for this $31, um, roughly around $30 average sale price. The higher excuse me, the higher up I go, the less items I have to sell to get there. So I like to keep my average sale price there. However, with shorts, because they sell through quickly in the summer, I don't mind taking that $22 average sale price because it's a quick flip to kind of give me some of that cash flow. Intimates, this has been sports bras from I purchased, um, and we'll look at that in a minute, I purchased part of a Macy's palette. So uh, it was like active wear that came from someone who purchased Macy's liquidation that I know to kind of get an idea if I was wanting to do a liquidation. So the intimates are going to mainly be like sports bras and stuff like that. So that is what I wanted to cover on my categories. Those are kind of the categories that are driving that revenue. I mean, of course you have all of these other stuff down here, but these are really the main drivers, those ones that I pointed out. My brands for the past 28 days that are, are driving that, what I want to talk about is Nike, an average sale price of $31. So that hits the price that I'm looking for in my simulator and the sell-through rate is 83%. That is killer, especially considering I've only introduced Nike into my closet in the past five to six weeks. So consider selling 83% of that pretty legit, which is why I've considered doing another active wear lot because I know Nike is going to provide a good uh, brand for my business, right? Some other things, Reebok is up there as well. Again, active wear. Patagonia, again, active wear. I mean, Patagonia is not a surprise for anybody, but this is where I'm kind of looking at, uh, I use my data to drive my decisions, right? I'm looking at a palette, and this is why I'm really considering, considering active wear is my data is telling me this is what's selling. Average sale price for Patagonia is $55. Uh, I think that was we'll look at it. Or maybe it was my last video I showed it to you. I think I sold a bag that was pretty high up for Patagonia, but jackets, I mean, Patagonia sells. And even if it doesn't always sell high, Patagonia definitely sells, but that's active wear. That's what's selling right now. The other thing for me that are selling, so this is a lower sell-through rate, but a high average sale price. And that is Kate Spade and then Coach. So bags, I love bags, y'all. Like, I'm not even going to lie. And I'm so glad that they do well for me because I love sourcing them. I love taking photos of them. Um, the nice thing about well-made bags is even if they're five, 10 years old, or even into the vintage, vintage, they still keep well and they look amazing and people still want them. So a uh, real quick tidbit on what I purchase mainly for bags. I mean, it all averages, but bags that are going to do well, or if you're a little nervous about getting into the bag game, you can look at the bigger, the better in general, the bigger, the better, and then keep it simple, black, brown. Um, if people like those classic bags that are going, especially if they're spending more, a bag that is going to go with all of the outfits and all of that. So this is kind of moving forward, what I'm looking at when I'm sourcing, what I'm considering with a palette. This is where I'm considering a active wear palette. This is where I love sourcing purses. And surprisingly enough, in the middle of a pandemic, my purses are still doing pretty well. 
Uh, Margaret says, I listed a Nike top yesterday and thought of you. What's funny is I never really purchased Nike before until I purchased this, you know, part of a palette from a friend. And I will say so that Nike is new with tech. So that will make somewhat of a difference in your average sale price. The frugal cat is saying my sales are down approximately 60% in the last month. Large part is harder sourcing with less estate yard sales. As a result of that, the thrift stores are seriously more picked through than pre pandemic. That is a very, very valid point. Um, the other issue that I'm having with thrift stores, well, twofold. So bins, the bins in our area are open, but you have to, they only allow so many people. You may have to wait in line. It's a much more time consuming process. And the thrift stores are open. However, they're overpicked because now people aren't going to the bin, not as many people are going to the bin. So now they're sourcing at thrift stores. And then also the employees, they can't have as many employees in the back processing their inventory because of, you know, you have to be so far apart. And so they're not putting out and moving as much inventory as they were in the are in pre-pandemic. So that's another reason that I've considered a pallet because it is harder to thrift right now. So great point, Frugal Cat. Thanks for sharing. Platforms, what is happening on my platforms? eBay is absolutely the main driver for me. Poshmark is down. Um, you can see I'm down almost oh what is that? Twelve hundred dollars from the previous year. eBay is up I was on eBay this time last year, so it's up, you know, 100%. But this is, I am, eBay is becoming my main platform. I did spend, I have a lot of people ask me about eBay, and I'm going to tell you, it takes time to get there. Um, and, and everyone told me this, and I'm glad that I stuck it out. It does take time to get there. It took me, until I started working with Chris and Duncan, holler to Duncan, he is in the chat, he definitely helped, until I... I was listing, I, I mean, I was on Poshmark, I know SEOs, I know pictures, I know how to do all of that. I was mostly consistent, but it took me until I started working with Chris and I spent a month of honestly giving stuff away. Um, and it hurt my heart. My average sale price went from, I mean, I was roughly at like $36 at that point and it went down to roughly $12 an item that did not include shipping coming out of it. So for the month of May on eBay, I was making roughly like $5 an item where I'm used to making, you know, $30, $40 an item. But that got my velocity going, eBay to take me seriously and say, hey, you really are a seller. And now eBay has become my main platform. And something that I like about eBay that I kept going with eBay because I knew this was going to be the case. One, their analytics are ridiculous. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that I looked at recently on there to help me grow and learn my business. The other thing is they have a broader audience. And also I don't have to share my closet. I don't have to like, I don't have to follow. I don't have to comment. I can still consistently make sales on eBay. Once I got to that point, I can make sales on eBay without having to keep up all of that stuff on Poshmark. The other thing about, but on the other side, Poshmark is nice if you're not a seller that can be consistent. Poshmark was nice when I was first starting. You can learn, you don't get dinged if you have to cancel an item. If you are working full-time or you have kids, it's something that you can go and give it love for a day and you'll see results. If you ignore it for a week, it doesn't hate you where eBay kind of hates you and you have to start all over again. So that's my two cents on those. Uh, I do, oh, let's look at sourcing really quick because I was talking about a palette and thrift stores as well. I am someone who will pay up for inventory. This is not a business that is, this is not a business practice for everybody. However, I do encourage you to really analyze and look at why you're sourcing what you're sourcing and if it is the best for your business. I don't particularly love the bins and let me show you why. Average cost of the bins is $1.50. Who doesn't love that? However, however, my average sale price for the bins or my average profit for the bins is $20. That is one of my lowest profits for all of the ways that I source and the bins is the most time consuming. So for me, I don't particularly love the bins. I go sometimes, I haven't been back since the pandemic, but this is why, not because I feel like it's not good, not because I feel like it isn't good. Like I look at my data and I'm like, it's not worth my time. What has been worth my time, I've been doing some online sourcing. This is nice because I can 
sit in bed at nine o'clock at night and do it. So this is great for my uh, busy schedule. However, it is time consuming, but my profits, I mean, I'm spending a little bit more. I'm spending on average $13 an item because you're paying for shipping and people want to make money. However, on average, I am profiting nearly $60 on these items because I can be much more particular about what I'm buying. Garage sales have been good, um, however time consuming. I've only hit up a couple of those. Uh, consignment, again, this is my brother-in-law, zero cost of goods because he purchases it and we do consignment. Uh, he obviously knows what he's doing because his average profit is $63 thrift store. So I have a couple different thrift stores in here, but you can see I spend more at thrift stores. It's definitely more than I spend at the bins. I will pay up thrift store prices. No surprise to most people out there watching, thrift store prices are going to be higher. However, it can be worth it. Um, one of the things I love about a thrift store, and I have a video coming out tomorrow about a haul that I did. I went into a thrift store for 20 minutes and came out with over $900 worth of items to sell. You can't do that at the bins. I can strategically look at my categories and my brands and know exactly what I'm looking for and go to those categories and boom, in 20 minutes, I can walk out. I'm not saying that strategy is what's best for everyone. I'm showing you my data to show you what strategies work for me so that you are able to look at your data and figure out what is going to work best for you. The other thing I do want to touch on, so this is the Macy's lot. This is part of a palette that I bought from a friend to kind of get a feel about what a palette looks like and how, you know, just kind of get an idea and then start selling it. So the average cost is $3 kind of love that. The average profit is only $20. So that is much lower. That's lower than my simulator uh, that I would aim for in my simulator. It is one of my lowest profits for all of my sourcing. However, I don't have to go anywhere to get it. That is a huge driver for me right now. It is the main reason that I'm looking at getting a palette is because I can have inventory right here. It comes to my house. I have been able to look online and figure out these palettes when kids are asleep, um, during lunch, you know, it's not as cumbersome as going out and thrifting. And then the other thing is who knows what's going to happen with a pandemic. If stores get shut down again, I still have inventory. So I am willing to take a little bit of a profit for those reasons, if that makes sense. I want to get into now I'm going to show you something on eBay eBay has so much amazing information and I don't, I'm scaling back what I'm doing on YouTube y'all because it is very time consuming. It takes, I've talked about this on some of my other videos too, but if you like YouTubers, definitely make sure to support them. Um, there's like super chats that you can do to give a little bit of extra or just run a playlist if they're monetized, if run a playlist in the background that can give a little bit of extra money to them as well. You don't make that much money on YouTube. End of the day, you don't. I like doing that. I like interacting with you. I like teaching. But when my time is limited, like right now, I have scaled back on my YouTube. I do still want to share this information for, with you guys and help you as much as I can. So make sure to follow me on Instagram as I'm finding, as I'm going through my day and I have tips and things come up, I share them in my stories and then I put them onto my highlights. Um, so that's something that's come up. A lot of the eBay tips that I share, I've shared a lot of eBay tips my stories recently, they'll be in my highlights or even data. Hey, like this is what I looked at today really quickly. I share that in my stories so I can still help provide some information for you guys. And that's what I want to look at. There's strategies on eBay and eBay gives you so much information that I want to share something that I was looking at this week to kind of decide, do I want to do, what do I want to do with promoted listings? And then also my selling costs. So Quick tip, and uh, Chris actually shared this with me, eBay is so hard to figure out where everything is. So once you find a screen that you like, bookmark it. And then you just have to go to your bookmarks and find it. But this is under the performance tab, and then I'm looking at sales. And if you scroll down here, you can click over to your promoted listing sales. And this tells you quickly how many sales you're getting from promoted listings and how many sales you're getting organically. So I have, if you follow me, I was doing free shipping in May. I got my sales velocity up. I was getting lots and lots of sales for the past two months. I have slowly weaned off of doing free shipping to see if I could still get my sales 
continue the velocity, but not have to pay as many shipping costs. Um, and that worked. And this is how I know. So my sales, and this is just eBay, but my sales are up 10%. So I have gotten rid of like 90% of my listings do not have free shipping on them anymore. However, my sales are up. So I was able to get rid of free shipping and still increase my sales. The thing that I want to look at now, I've considered what do I do with promoted listings? Should I keep them on? Should I get rid of them? What's happening? Right now, 53% of my sales are coming from promoted listings, 49% from organic sales. With sales slowing down right now, I don't feel comfortable lowering my promoted listings. I currently have them set to trending. Um, I don't, I, I want to see what happens in August and kind of let things play out. My sales are already down. And if I do something with promoted listings, then I don't know if it's outside factors like the economy, back to school, um, the stimulus, all of that, or if it's going to be from promoted listings. So because over half of my sales are coming from promoted listings right now, I'm leaving that business as usual. But something you have to be very um, cognizant of when you're looking at this is your selling costs. So eBay, you know, oh, we're only 10%. I mean, yes, but also there's lots of things that can add to that. Your promoted listings add to that. Depending on what you do with shipping, your selling costs come out of that. You have PayPal fees. Um, and so if you scroll down here, you can look at your selling costs split out. Duncan saying, thanks, Duncan. Keep your promoted listings on. So I'm glad that Duncan approves. Duncan knows his eBay stuff. So I'm going to keep them on for now. And as things increase and I feel better, then I'll slowly start to wean those off. But from now, but this is how I make that decision. Um, and I want to show you guys how to make educated decisions in your business and to figure out if they're working or not. Selling costs. So I did get rid of free shipping, which now means that my price has gone up. What people pay has gone up because shipping is included in that growth, right? So to tell you how this is going and what to look at and what I look at, I'm looking at, oh, we were talking about, sorry, I got sidetracked with the Duncan and uh, the cost. So this is looking at my selling costs and eBay technically is 10%, but there's a lot of stuff that can get wrapped into it. And if you've ever looked at one of your invoices, it's hard to know what's going on. So I like to look at the split out and this helps me see if what I'm doing is working. So my shipping labels, now my shipping is being added into my gross costs. So this, um, and of my selling costs, okay, let's go back. My selling costs are roughly 27.8% of my total sales. However, this chart is looking at your selling costs as eBay fees, shipping labels, and PayPal fees. Shipping labels for me, because I don't do free shipping, is on top, right? That's on top of the money that I'm expecting to pay. Like if I was comparing if they're sold on Poshmark to eBay, I'm charging additional for shipping because I'm not doing free shipping. So for my purpose, I'm not considering that shipping labels as part of my fees because it's not coming out of my money, right? Does that make sense? Um, I hope I explained that right. Ask questions if it still doesn't make sense. But so I want to look at my fees. What are my fees on eBay? Are they really that 10%? They're not, but they are better than the 27%. So the 27% is of my total sales, but my that includes 50% is shipping. So if you take out 50% of my shipping fees, that is now saying that eBay, my fees are roughly 13, what is that, 13.4%? I don't know, I can't do quick math. <laughs> But it is, let me see, I'll do exact math for you. 27.8 divided by 2, 13.9, I was close. So my fees are 13.9. That's with having half of my fees coming from promoted listing. That's still 8% less than it is on Poshmark. I'm completely fine leaving my promoted listings the way that they are. I'm still going to be making more money. So I hope I explained that well. Um, definitely leave comments if you have, if you're watching this in the recording, questions down below or send me a DM. But those are kind of a couple of things that I am considering in my business. And this is how I make decisions. Is this working for me? I feel like, I, I don't feel like things. I look at numbers, I look at math, and I want to show you guys what I look at and how to look at it. Who wants to look at some things that sold. What is contributing to all of these numbers? This is the fun part, right? Make sure to hit that smash. 
no smash that like button i'm not cool enough to say these words smash that like button um if you guys are watching and like this content if you're new to the channel definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button and notifications i do this what sold every single wednesday and then i also have a monthly or a weekly monday call where we talk about accountability and what we're working on lots of great information always comes out of that I have a special guest this coming week. Um, I'm gonna call her a big influencer because she is bigger than I am. Um, and it's very exciting to have these people on my call. Duncan is saying shipping labels paid by the buyer if you charge for shipping, but not for those marked as free shipping. Thank you. That's what I was trying to say. And Duncan said it much more eloquently. <laughs> <laughs> so let's hop into it. We are going to look at my Poshmark sales first, and then we will he head on over to my eBay sales. Um, I made notes, so I want to make sure that I did cover everything for you guys that I looked at. I think we're good. Yep. All right. So let's hop into it. What happened on Poshmark? Can you guys see the screen? Yeah. Okay. So these are my sales. Keep in mind, we are looking at the past two weeks. Poshmark, 25 items sold. Jeans. Uh, so the first one down here, these rag and bone jeans, I, I'm kind of scaling back on my jeans. I did a bunch of jeans over the summer in prep for, if you, I'm going to show you actually, let's look at eBay one more time because eBay has really great information to tell you what to source. And so eBay, if you come, you have to have a store to be able to get this, but if you come over, actually, let me. Let me take this off for just a minute so I don't confuse you guys. But let me find. So let's say what's a pair of jeans? True religion, right? So let me bring this back up for you guys. So quickly, eBay tells you what, like they literally give you the information telling you what to source. So if you're like, I don't know, as I'm looking at a palette, I'm looking at this information too. If it's something I'm not familiar with, I'll pop it in here really quick and get an idea of how eBay is going to say that it's going to sell. So here really quickly, I am up here on research and then you can look at Terapeak product research. I just typed in true religion. You can get much more into this information. It also has sourcing guidance, listing improvements, lots of really good information here, but oh. I got rid of my search. So you can look here, um, and I, I'm just, for the sake of this, quickly going to type in true religion under the Terapeak. But you can come in here and you can see the average sold price. You can see uh, people are doing free shipping on it, what it's shipping for, your sell-through rates, and look at all of that. The other really cool thing, now I have to remember where it is. Show current trends. No, that's not it. Maybe it's here. I wasn't planning on doing this, so it's going to take me a minute to find it. But it's really cool because it tells you the seasonal patterns to see what is working um, or what you should like. Here it is. I knew it was here somewhere. Um, so this is where you save the tab, right? So this tells you the seasonal pattern. So June and July, it makes sense that jeans aren't selling. So in June and July, when no one else was buying them at thrift stores, I was out there sourcing jeans because, look, it totally increases right here. So if you can have that inventory when people are ready to purchase it, you're going to be ahead of the game. You can also look at new items as well. It gives you price breakdowns here. Um, it'll go by brands, what brands as growth opportunity. Lots of really great information here. I've done one or two other videos on it, um, but I did want to show you that because we were talking about jeans. This is eBay. Let's go back to Posh real quick. Okay, so jeans. I did spend some time sourcing jeans because of that um, i was looking at the terra peak data looking at what was selling what was trending and that is something that i wanted to stock up on as schools aren't necessarily opening i'm still looking for jeans but maybe not at the rate that i was looking at them before this is the patagonia uh this was my brother of course my brother-in-law knew it tags patagonia it actually sold right at retail I think retail for this bag was like $79, um, which is pretty legit to be able to sell, resell something at retail, um, unless it's something that's like vintage or highly sought after, right? So Banana Republic, this was donated. I did, if you follow me, I purchased a bunch of information or a bunch of inventory at the beginning of the pandemic when I had nothing from my cousin who closed her boutique. So this is one of it. This seems to be something that people are looking for because every one of these that I've sold has been from a guest buyer. 
So if you're on Poshmark and you get a purchase, if it, you, they purchase it full out, it's likely someone who Googled it um, because most people in Poshmark or someone who's new, most people in Poshmark will send an offer. Um, they don't buy full price for anything. But if you get someone who has like guessed one, two, three, four, five, six, or some kind of uh, username like that, it means that they search for it in Google. They were specifically looking for that and then they purchased it without having an account. Um, and most of the ones that I've sold of this have been that kind of a seller. This, I still don't know if I'm saying it right, errata, that sounds like, I don't know, very erotic, right? Um, but this brand, it's more of a boutique brand, but it's it's been selling very well for me. It's all new with tags, but it is selling. I mean, people are paying a good price for it. And it is, I've had quite a few people, like a lot of bundles I'm getting for this where they're buying multiple items from the same brand. Um, so it is selling well, something to keep out for if you see it out there. This watch was a bundle i think this watch was a bundle with this yes tell me this is not the weirdest bundle like we're mid pandemic i'm like oh people aren't buying things right now you know we're whatever and then i sell a kate spade a coach and a formal js collections gown in a bundle i'll take it i will absolutely take it but people i don't know i give up i don't have any idea what people are doing um my bags are still selling. I don't know if people, you know, are thinking, I don't know. I'll take it though. My bags are still selling. Those are two of them. This one was a, I uh, purchased on Poshmark and flipped it in less than a month. So I'll take that. Um, excuse me. If you guys have been watching, follow me on Instagram and YouTube. I've been talking about sale inventory. What should you do with it? Do you get rid of it? Do you like, what do you guys do with your sale inventory? I've been talking about it. This dress I'd had for a year and a half and I was getting ready to like do something with it. And it sold this dress I've had for a year and a half. I was also getting ready to do something with it and it sold. Same with this purse and these pair of jeans. So now I'm kind of more in the hoarding mindset of everything will sell eventually. This is a free people gray jacket. Um, I don't know. It's, I, this is me. I don't sell a lot of free people. This is modeled. Um, so I'm feeling like if I do sell free people, then I'm going to be have to model it, which then is also more time consuming. Is it worth that price? I can't if I'm paying someone to take pictures like I can't pay her because she's not modeling them. Right. So that's something I have to consider on the palette that I want to buy. But I don't know those who sell free people. Do you think I could have gotten more than thirty dollars for this? I have no idea, but I took it. Um, sales were slower. This is a vintage coach purse. Um, I think, let me see if I can open up a picture. I, oh yes. So it did have, yes, this vintage coach can go for a lot more than $45, but this did have some pretty good signs of wear, a big stain right there. Um, so that's kind of why you're seeing that $45 price range, but vintage coach can go for higher than that. I secretly ha love vintage coach uh, as well. This is a men's motorcycle jacket for my brother-in-law. I know nothing about men's, very little about men's. This is from the Macy's lot. I mean, it's not selling huge $14, but you know, it sells and look, it's easy to take pictures of. It doesn't wrinkle. That's another thing I'm concerning with the palette, right? If I buy all this, these free people items, Maybe I have to model them since I don't do stock photos, which is more time. And then also like steaming. Most active wear you can take out, hang it up, and it has very little wrinkles in it. Uh, so steaming takes a lot of time. Um, is that worth it? These page jeans were part of a bundle with, so she purchased these, or he, I don't remember, uh, these Ugg boots, these Reebok leggings, and then I give a free, so any of these items that have a fire on them are free items that I use to encourage people to bundle. Uh, so it will say free with purchase here, it has a fire. And then if I have time, I will go into people who like an item and say, hey, you get a free item with this fire on it. I do this in Poshmark because it encourages people to go back into my closet and look for more items because they're looking for their free items, but then they'll, they'll see other stuff too. Most people, most people only 
or are searching for something and like that. They rarely shop people's closets. So this kind of encourages them to shop the closet. So the free items are either things that I've had forever or these page jeans have like a tear in them. So like they weren't going to sell at full price. So I put them, I already have them. I already listed them. I didn't realize it until I was like halfway done with the process. So then I give it away for free or jewelry, scarves, jewelry. I get really cheap at like garage sales. You can buy like a whole lot of jewelry for like $5 usually. Um, and then scarves I have too, because you can get scarves at the bins for, you know, like a quarter. Uh, so that's how these Reeboks were actually, I've tried paying, Chris is big on paying people to pick for you. I have yet to find a source that does a great job. Um, I mean, not that they're not good. They're good, but they are also resellers. So they usually keep like the really good stuff for themselves. Uh, and then I get some of the other stuff. So, I mean, they sold these Uggs, who doesn't love some Uggs? This is that Macy's lot, sold for $20, new with tags. This is again the Macy's lot. So from the Macy's lot, it's been listed for roughly four to six weeks. Take me a couple of weeks to get it all listed. And I've sold, I think like 37% of it, uh, which is a fairly good percent. I feel like that's a good sell through rate as well. This is vintage. My vintage has not been doing great. Yeah, look, let's look. You guys can see. Um, I'm slowly trying. I, I'm stepping off of vintage, to be completely honest. I will only pick up something if it's amazing. Vintage, currently, my sell-through rate is 4%. That's not great. If you want to look at my sell-through rate, I mean, let's look at last July for vintage. Oh, where is vintage? It's green. No. Let me find it. Sorry, guys. Where is my vintage? Oh, there it is. It was great. I had it on there. <laughs> so my vintage last July was a 46% sell through rate. Significantly better than it is now. People are getting, I mean, vintage tends to be more like dressy. Like when you go places or you're going to a bar, you're going to brunch, right? Like you're not doing that right now. Um, so I've definitely scaled back on the vintage that I'm purchasing. What's up, Daniela? If you guys don't follow Daniela, she's one of my favorite people. She just posted a video. Um, so after you watch this, I to head on over there as well. Erica is saying, I stopped steaming. So what do you do? Do you just, is it just wrinkled? Or do you have any tips or tricks? Someone told me in one of my comments on a YouTube that there is a bag that you can purchase from Chi, like the Chi blow dryers and Chi flat irons. And you put items in there and then it seems like in the back. So you don't have to like spend your time doing it. So that's something you can, I can look into too. I don't have to see. Um, ideology, again, that is from the Macy's lot. So you can see the Macy's lot is selling, I mean, $23, $15, not huge, but it's inventory that I don't have to be outsourcing. Christian Dior, this kind of breaks my heart because I'm not a fancy person. And Christian Dior to me is like, so fancy and it only sold for $25, uh, but it is what it is. Dear John, this is from my cousin's boutique, new with tags, jeans they're selling. This is also from my cousin's boutique. Again, this is a pair, this is, uh, I think this came with this. This was a bundle together. So she bought, no, she actually, what happened here? So this is something, she purchased something. I don't remember what it was. And I went to ship it and I already sold it on eBay. So I sent her a message and say, hey, I'm so sorry, this item is not available anymore. However, if you would like to find something else in my closet, I will give you X amount percent off because of the in un inconvenience. Um, and so she went to my closet and she found this skirt and got a free item and we were both happy. So instead of turning a sale that I didn't make, I turned it into a sale that I made and made her happy. So something I like to do um, if that does happen, if there's any kind of inconvenience. Jeans, not your daughter's jeans, sold Amy. So if you are looking for jeans and eBay, you can look in Terapeak data to see what is selling or what, uh, yes, what styles are selling, but something to look for, skinny, high-rise leggings. Those are all keywords. Those are all kind of trending right now. This black rivet was a dud. So I have a rule 80-20. When I'm sourcing at a thrift store, 
80% is stuff that I already know that's going to sell. 20% is new items. This looks cute. Some of the, the comps were all over the place. So I was like, meh, I'll try this brand. Sold for $15. So I probably won't buy that again. BB Dakota, this is from my cousin's lot. And then here's a pair of jeans. So that is Poshmark. I realized we're almost at 530. So I am going to kind of quickly go through my eBay sales. This actually, I shared it on my Instagram today. You can bundle in eBay. It's not nearly as easy as it is in Poshmark, but this and this sold. She purchased them together and then I shipped it together. I saved on shipping because I could purchase it. I could ship it together. Um, and so that's something I, if I have time, I do reach out to people who have purchased something and say, hey, if you want to add to your uh, ship, or if you want to add to your purchase, I can ship it all together and you'll save on shipping or whatever. So those were purchased together. Ark and Company. This one was so hard to take a photo of. I did it on a rack. Let's see. Can you see it? Yeah, I did it here, but like that you can't really tell. And then on a mannequin, but it's like white on white. So I don't know. That was hard to take a photo of. Banana Republic. This is a mini skirt. Very surprised this sold as quickly as it did. It's a petite and my skirts really do not sell very well, to be honest. This is one of the electronics from my brother-in-law. It is a half of the things I don't even know what they are. Um, this is a digital time clock. It's a vintage digital time clock. Never in my life would I have picked that up. This is one of the intimates. So this is a sports bra that sold. This was, so on eBay, it, it comes up with the price. If it was a best offer, it doesn't say that. So this was a best offer. I think it sold around maybe like 20 or $25. You can see, so down here with my shipping, I'm doing a flat shipping. So $9.99, $3.99. Sometimes I make a little, sometimes I lose a little, uh, but that's what I did to get rid of vintage or to get rid of free shipping. This, I actually had an offer early in the week for like, $40. And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Um, because I'd sold one of these before and I sold it. I think it was closer to a hundred, but it was like pre pandemic. I think I got a best offer of like 70. Uh, so I took that. This was basically just to get sales going. So the, sc the scarves and stuff that I have for free on Poshmark, I have on eBay basically for free as well. So you can see it's $4.59, but it's fast and free. So I'm not making money off of this. This is basically just to keep sales going and to get some velocity on the app. This was a best offer. Cowboy boots. I love the shipping boots on eBay. It's such a pain and it gets so expensive. This was from my brother-in-law, two Smokey the Bear hats. Who would have known you could sell these two hats for $60? I mean, I probably would never pick that up, but I'm also learning things. This again is that Arata brand. Um, these dresses, this dress is really cute. I've had so much interest in it, but you can see it's like a fishnet, so it's see-through. And so a lot of people are kind of hesitant about that, but they are selling. This is one of my vintages, vintage items that are selling. If you're into vintage, something that is kind of hot and trendy right now is this pleated, oh, that's not coming, yeah, there you go. The pleated front pocket, so high rise, but then with the pleats is coming back in, which I don't really think is, I mean, I guess if you're a mom, it's not really flattering. I feel like it just makes my like mom belly even worse, but you know, that's why the hip young kids wear it and not me. Um, these, tell me if y'all remember these, like, <laughs> It's amazing. And it likes, you know, like you put it up and it sings. So this sold at an auction. Um, there was a couple of bidders. Apparently it's hot. These are wider waterproof bicycle bags. These, they sold $80. So these are like what's driving some of those uh, home goods and like, well, that was an electronic, but like the fish thing was an electronic. All my brother-in-law things I know nothing about. Half the time I take pictures and I'm like, I don't even know what this is. Um, Joe's jeans, these sold for like $7. Joe's jeans sell, they do not sell high. And I think those were a kid, so they sold even lower. This, I am I have no idea what this is. <laughs> a digital satellite finder. Again, I still don't, I mean, it finds satellites. I don't, I have no idea what that is. But that's what is contributing to the electronics. Again, this is the Arata brand. I did this, fat. I see these are some of the fast and freeze that I'll keep. This weighs like next to nothing. And if someone's gonna pay $30, I will pay the $2 to ship it to them. 
Messenger bag, the North Face. Um, that wasn't in one of my top brands. I don't think I have a lot of North Face right now. North Face is up there with uh, brands that sell. Not always super high, but they definitely sell. Echo boots. I hated shipping these. What do you guys do for your boots? Um, I've been doing $9.99 because I want to try and keep my shipping costs down. But I feel like to ship a pair of boots like this, it's closer to like $13 to $15. Um, so I'm considering increasing that. What do you guys think? Let me know. Coach, this sold, I think almost every coach that sold this video was flips from Poshmark. Um, so I purchased them on Poshmark and flipped them for a higher profit. Um, again, here you go. Here is that same brand. I almost feel like this was the same lady because they were purchased at the same time, one on Posh and one on eBay. Sorel, who doesn't love a good pair of Sorels? These were slippers. I found those at the bins, to be honest. Um, tell me if you had one of these growing up. Um, I mean, some of you young folk probably didn't, but I absolutely had one of these. It is a stereo, but you pop it out and put it in the case and keep it in your purse so, so people don't steal it. For those of you that, you know, are old like me, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Z Supply. This may have been returned. I don't remember. So I get probably three to five returns on eBay a month for fit. That's, I mean, it, even though I, I put measurements and everything, this was a flip Poshmark to eBay. I was hoping to get more. It was in really good, good shape and it uh, was a three piece, but the comps weren't as good as I was hoping. It is what it is. It's sold in like a week. So this is Calvin Klein from the Macy's lot. It's selling. That was the best offer. I think it sold around 20 bucks. Again, here are some coach, these purses. I mean, people are buying purses. I'm, I'm blown away by it. Like the economy is a mess. We're not going anywhere, but like you need a fancy purse. I'll take it. Like I'm not complaining by any means. I just, it blows my mind because I don't understand it. This is a pair of shorts. This one was um, a return. I know that I just put it away. So this was a return. She said it didn't fit well, even though you can see. So I take pictures of all my measurements so that they can see exactly what I'm measuring um, where it is. So she said it didn't fit like she wanted. So, I mean, that's part of eBay. <laughs> I'm still young. Um, I mean, I'm younger, but I also had one of those CD players. Um, and I saved, I worked really hard and I saved my own money to have it. So I wanted to make sure that it didn't get sit, um, stolen. Danielle is saying, I had one of those. I begged my parents for that type of system for my first car. Uh, my parents were mean. I don't want to say mean. I was one of six kids. So I purchased my first car. It was $500. Um, it was a POS, but I loved it. And my own stereo. And I put like a big amp in the back. Like, ugh, oh, Lord. <laughs> I was that kid. Um, so the North Face, again, North Face sells. Here's your Patagonia. It sells. This is, I did this for fast and free. If they're going to pay $40 or something and it's going to cost me $2 to ship, I have kept that free shipping on there. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Uh, mounted dive compass. I mean, up oh, for scuba diving. Yeah, I have no idea. But if you guys come across this, it sells for $50. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, ink cartridges. These were actually, yeah, expired in 2013, but they still, still sold for like 60 bucks. This is a water filtration system. It sold for $149. That's just, this is what's driving those electronics. But I will tell you, my brother-in-law has been doing this for 12 years. I would never in my, like, I would never know what to pick up. Um, but now I'm learning from him, right? So it's a learning process too. Here's the North Face. Um, I'm fairly sad that these sold because I would have kept them. Um, I was going to give them a little time. And if they didn't sell at the price I wanted, then I was going to keep them. So the last sale is not your daughter jeans boot cut. This is interesting. They are saying boot cut is coming back and here you go. Boot cut jeans. So that is my sales for the last two weeks. Thank you guys for hanging in for the full hour. I appreciate it. I hope it is helpful to you. If there's certain information that you want to see in these videos, definitely reach out to me and say, Hey, can you share how you did this or how you decided on that or what data you look at? Um, I want to share with you guys to help provide you ways to figure out what is working for you. That is the intent in these 
videos, not just to say, hey, look, I'm so good. Um, it's not about that at all. It's to use my data to show you how I'm making choices in my business in hopes that it will help you decide and learn what to look at for your business as well. So on that note, um, let me see if I have any Make sure to smash that like button and hit the subscribe if you like content like this. The other thing too, if you guys aren't big on YouTube, it really helps. We don't make a lot of money as YouTubers unless you're like, you know, one of the 1% that has like a gazillion views. If you have time to leave a comment or share a, a one of, I'm not, not just for me, but for other YouTubers that you like, share a video, leave a comment that helps it boost it in ranks so that it gets more views. And then we are getting paid a little bit more for that as well. So that's something that you guys can do to help your favorite YouTubers. Just giving that little uh, disclaimer out there, P public service and out and PSA um, out there as well. If you guys have YouTubers that you like content on. Oh, Lori, what is up, Lori? Um, and then my Monday, I have a Monday reseller call. So it is open to anybody. You can join on the video if you feel comfortable with that, or you can join in the comments every Monday, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard. If you want to join in the video, send me a DM on Instagram and I will send you the link and we will talk about our successes for the weeks and our goals for the next week and everything that comes up in between as well. I am scaling back my YouTube, but I'm still on Instagram often um, and sharing lots of tips and tricks over there. So make sure to subscribe. No, follow me on Instagram um, and then also follow my stories because I share a lot of tips as I'm going through my day, things that come up that I'm like, oh, this would be helpful for other people to know. So that is it. That is it. Yes, I covered all of my notes. That is it. Thank you guys so much for joining and watching the video. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't. Have a good night.